Welcome back to the Double M Innovations channel. I had a few requests asking for more information about the crystal radio that I had shown in the last few videos. They wanted to know what the schematics were and how I built it. So that's what this video is going to be about. There's all different kinds of crystal radios out there that people have built. This is one that I put together from a kit probably 20 some years ago. I think maybe it was $14 at the time. It's probably intended for kids or something. It does work a little bit, but it's not that impressive. Now, the one I've been showing in the video is this one right here. I found the basic design of this one from a 1950s, 1960s book from Alfred Morgan called The Boy's Second Book of Radio and Electronics. There was a chapter on a more selective crystal receiver. And I took that basic design. I did a few alterations to it, but this one has a few more adjustments on it than this little one over here. So it does work better. Going straight to the schematics that you'll find in the book. And this is what they have. If you get a clear look at that. Then I made a couple alterations, and this is what I have. I kept the same coil design, the same number of turns that are over here. And so we have 40, 40, 40, 30, and 95. And that corresponds up here to the actual radio. And the, only a couple things that I changed in the schematics. I don't know, maybe they intended to do it over here. With, with this one tuning capacitor, I have the antenna going straight into the tuning capacitor. And that's this line right here. And then from there, I can go up to any of these positions up here, any of these contact clips. And that's this wire right here. The higher frequencies are over here and the lower frequencies are over there. And one other alteration that I made from what they have is I got a 10K crossover resistance. And it, this does help. I don't understand. Maybe they had different kinds of earphones or something. But this crossover resistance really helps to hear more from the earpiece. And see, this is earpiece up there that I was using. And I'm just using the germanium diode, the 1N34. That's this guy right here between these clips. This is my crossover resistance. And this is my ground right here. Now I got something else going on here that they don't. I have an amplifier going on right here with an earth battery. So... This is actually a negative ground. This goes to a magnesium rod out in the ground. And this is the positive with, for that earth battery. And this is that amplifier I showed in another video. And I have it out here again. I'll show it again. And separate these a little bit more. So you can see how I just continue with the schematics, crossover, crossover, and then this over here is the amplifier. I went over this in the other video pretty good, so I don't have to go over that again. And then I just mounted my piezoelectric tweeter right up here. So it's probably about, when I'm sitting at my bench here, it's probably about head level, so I can hear it pretty good. And with mine, this is just, I'm connecting it up to the positive ground. And I have a little potentiometer here to control the volume to the power. So with these two tuning capacitors, I can get better adjustments. And mostly it's just talk radio that we'll get over here.
probably only get maybe two channels here. And then if I want to change coil positions with these connector clips, I press that down and slide that out. And I can go to a different one and get a little bit different adjustments. And now I'll go over the construction of this. I have a wood base. I think I got it from Hobby Lobby. And it is a little under nine and a half by, looks like six and a half. And it was just bare wood. I stained it and put some varnish on it. And I have it setting on some drawer bumpers or just adhesive. They're stuck to the bottom. And the coil, I constructed a little bit different than it shows in the book. This is the layout and construction it shows in the book for the coil. In the book, he used a wood core, inch and a half by 10 inches long. And what I used was a PVC tube. And this is an inch and a half extension tube for a sink drain. And I needed an inch and a half outside diameter in order to get the windings the same as what he has here. And let's see, it is seven and three quarter inch long. This is a white PVC. I painted it to make it look a little bit better. And it's wound with 24 gauge wire, enameled magnetic wire. And it didn't take a hundred feet. It took a little bit less, but you get it on a coil like this. And this was the most work was just wrapping the wire around the tube. And these are just some uh, fence stock spring clips is what they're called. And I just have them screwed right into the PVC. This whole coil is screwed into the wood. I got a little, I got nylon standoff with a screw in to the base to hold it. And that was the most work of this radio. These two tuning capacitors, they were the most expensive. These are 365 picofarad capacitors, air core. Now I got these off of eBay. They were used. Um, I can't remember. It might have been maybe $16 for this one. I bought it a while ago. This one I think was more, probably like $26. You can get some newer ones, but they are kind of expensive. They can be up to 49 bucks. I think I've seen them. But I bought these used. I have them attached to the base with an angle bracket. If you can look underneath there, I have an angle bracket here with a wood screw into the base and another screw into a thread that was in the capacitor. So that's what I got to hold them on there with. And I think that's pretty much everything there. And then all this other stuff that's connected, I showed in other videos. I got my earth battery, my amplifier, and my piezoelectric tweeter. This potentiometer is just a 2K. And all this other stuff is just from a tenor array I have out there that the radio is connected to. But I also have it connected to some energy rectifiers. And I have that connected up to some it's lighting some LEDs. But these LEDs are not affecting the radio operation. This is additional power that's in the wires that isn't being used by the radio. It's not enough to operate the amplifier, really. I can charge something up, but I showed in another video. I can use the extra power off the antennas to charge up a bigger capacitor to operate the amplifier, but actually the earth battery works a lot better. 
So I think that covers everything with the radio. I can't think of anything else that I missed. This is a piece of that inch and a half PVC tube that I use when I wrap the coil, the radio coil. These are pretty inexpensive. It's just a sink drain extension piece, PVC. I think it was less than $3, I think. So I hope that answers all the questions that were out there about that radio. And thanks for your time for watching.